Policy and Regulation, Department of Labor and Employment, Bureau of Local Employment, and Ms. Annalyn Kawinian, Visa Manager, and Mr. Lorenzo Miguel Piman, Visa Services Assistant Manager of Kittleson and Carpal Consulting, Inc. I would like to thank our partners for this event, the British Chamber of Commerce, Dutch Chamber of Commerce, European Chamber of Commerce, French Chamber of Commerce, German Philippine Chamber of Commerce, and the Philippine Swiss Business Council. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. Please keep your microphones and videos off while the presentations are going on. And please make sure you use, you are using your complete names while on the webinar for proper identification. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the chat box and our speakers will answer them later on during the Q&A. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Ms. Rosalinda P. Pineda. Ms. Pineda has a Juris Doctor degree obtained from San Sebastian College, Recoletos, Manila. With 15 years of experience in the public service, she is currently the Division Chief of the Employment Service Policy and Regulations Division of DOLE, Bureau of Local Employment, that handles private employment agency regulations, assistance to first-time job seekers, free trade agreements, legislative matters related to employment, and the alien employment regulation. As a policy manager, she led the amendment of the alien employment permit guidelines or the DOLE Department Order Number 221 Series of 2021, which was issued early this year, and all other related issuances concerning the employment of foreign nationals in the Philippines. I now turn it over to Ms. Pineda. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Smang. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And to all the members of the Nordic Chamber of Commerce present today, uh, I wish to extend my, uh, extend my sincerest gratitude for uh, inviting us today for this forum for us to be able to discuss to you some of the important features or the important matters regarding employment of foreign nationals. Um, next slide, please. The first question for a foreign national if he, is, if he wants to work in the country is, is he allowed or is she allowed to work in the Philippines? The answer is yes. yes. There are, uh, there are actually two tracks wherein a foreign national uh, may work in the country. It could be either long-term or short-term. Next slide, please. Under, under Article 40 of the Labor Code, it provides that any alien seeking admission to the Philippines for employment purposes may, uh, may uh, and any domestic or foreign enterprises who desires to engage an alien for employment uh, in the Philippines shall obtain an employment permit from the Department of Labor. And an employment permit may be issued to a non-resident after the determination of the non-availability of a person in the Philippines who is competent, able, and willing to perform the services for which the alien is desired. Actually, this is called the labor market test. And I will be discussing to you uh, in uh, a few uh, in a bit later regarding uh, how we conduct the labor market test. For the long-term work arrangement, we actually have conditions to follow. Um, for more than six months, and for foreign workers who will come to the Philippines by virtue of an employment arrangement with a Philippine-based company, here are the actions that they have to do. They have to apply for a, an alien employment permit or an EEP, a certificate of exemption or exclusion with the Department of Labor and Employment. And they should have an appropriate visa with the, they should apply for the appropriate visa with the Bureau of Immigration or other visa issuing agencies. Next slide, please. And for the short-term work arrangement, uh, it, can be, uh, it can be less than six months or it should not be more than six months. The foreign nationals who will come to the Philippines on a temporary basis for work, perform specific activities or render services, whether in the context of an employment arrangement or otherwise. And there are 14 specific activities already enumerated in the DOL DOJ DIBIR joint guidelines that was issued in 2019. So the foreign nationals should apply for a special work permit with the Bureau of Immigration, or they can also apply for an alien employment permit with the Department of Labor and Employment, because there are some specific categories that they could apply 
for uh, for an alien employment permit, even if it's not more than six months or less than six months. Next slide, please. What are the assurances on the employment of foreign nationals? So first, we have the Dole DOJ DI DIR Joint Guidelines Number Zero One Series of Twenty Nineteen. Actually, this uh, guidelines was signed in May of 2019, and it was published on July 1st of 2019 also, but, and it took effect on the 16th of July 2019, or 15 days after its publication in the newspaper of general circulation. Next slide. So these are the salient features of uh, the DOLDI or JDI and DI joint guidelines, or JG. First, the special work permit that was previously issued by the Bureau of Immigration is only limited after the issuance of that particular joint guidance to only 14 specific activities or services, and those are actually outside an employment arrangement. It will be valid for six months, non-renewable. Initially, it is uh, issued by three uh, in three months' time and final three months when applied. Next, the special temporary permit by the PRC for the practice of regulated profession. Um, next, uh, next one is the taxpayer identification number requirement for AEP and SWP applications. Previously, uh, previously the tax identity, uh, taxpayer identification, identification number or TIN is not a requirement for, for AEP. But because of the joint guidelines, it was already required for those who would apply for AEP and SWP as well. Uh, one, also, one of the solid features of the joint guidelines is the provisional work permit that is issued by the Bureau of Immigration. This is actually issued pending the approval of AEP and or, or the 9G work visa pursuant to an employment arrangement. Next slide, please. Next, we have uh, also an interagency of uh, Interagency issue ones, which is the DOE, DFA, DOJ, uh, DENR, DI, DIR, NICA, PRC Joint Memorandum Circular Series uh, 001 Series of 2019. This is actually the rules and procedures governing foreign nationals intending to work in the Philippines. And this is um, uh, this is already this already contains all. Uh, the visas and the permits being issued by different government agencies apart from the first four that was mentioned in the joint guidelines. It was signed in July 11th of 2019 and published on the 17th of uh, October 2019 and took effect on the 2nd of November 2019. The silent features of the joint memorandum circular is that it provides two options in securing 9G work visa, which is already applicable uh, in this uh, pandemic uh, situation. The dole issuance of certificate of no objection. And then we have the creation of a joint inspection team by dole, DI, and DIR. There is also the submission of monthly reports by those uh, by the uh, issue permit and visa issuing agencies to the dual, to the Department of Labor and Employment, which we eventually submit to the National Intelligence Coordinate, uh, Coordinating Agency or uh, agency, yes. And then lastly, we have the development of an inter interagency database system. Next slide, please. For the joint memorandum circular, since I have already mentioned in the slide earlier that there are two options provided, um, provided we're in a foreign national may secure an ID visa. Option one is when the foreign national is already in uh, is already in the country. So this is actually how it goes: the foreign national arrives in the Philippines with an nine A visa, and then foreign national enters into a contract with the Philippines-based employer, and then. The employer secures an, um, an authority to employ alien from the DOJ or authority to hire foreign national from uh, AHFN. Uh, AHFN from the DNR. And then a foreign national would also uh, get a special temporary permit whenever applicable from the Philippine Regu uh, Regulations Commission. And then they would apply for an alien employment permit. Uh, it is uh, the AEP could be applied by uh, by either the employer or the foreign national or the foreign national through uh, his or her employer. 
And then uh, after the issuance of the AEP, the foreign national applies for a 90 visa. Just, but just let me uh, give you some, uh, 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 an important uh, note on this one. Whenever, uh, whenever an AEP is already issued, it doesn't necessarily mean that the foreign national can already uh, work. There has to be a 90 visa issued before he could actually work. And then the PWP that was mentioned in the joint memorandum circular earlier is that is actually the bridging, uh, the bridging uh, permit wherein they are already allowed to work with by virtue of the PWP or pending the approval of the 90 visa. Next slide, please. And then for option two for uh, foreign national or still outside the country. The employer, uh, the employer would execute a contract with the foreign national and then applies all the necessary permit, just like uh, in option one, the AEA or the uh, alien uh, employment, uh, alien, uh, authority to uh, employ alien, and then authority to hire the foreign national if and when applicable, and then the AEP and STP in behalf of the foreign national. And then um, employer applies for an ID visa in behalf of the foreign national. And once approved, uh, if uh, the 90 visa has already been approved, the employer advises the foreign national to get the 90 visa at the Philippine Consulate General's Office in their country of origin. Next. These are, uh, uh, these are the applicable permits, visas, authorities on the employment of foreign nationals. As I've mentioned earlier, the Professional Regulation Commission uh, issues the tempor uh, STP or Special Temporary Permit, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources through the Mines and Geosciences Bureau issues the authority to hire foreign nationals or foreign national. And then we have the Department of Justice that issues special non-immigrant visa or 47A2 visa and also the authority to employ alien or AEA. Uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs uh, also issues a special non-immigrant visa or 47A2. And they also issue pre-arranged employment visa or 9D visa. And this is actually issued at the post for the Philippine Consulate General's Office. The Bureau of Immigration issues the special work permit and then the provisional work uh, permit. And most importantly, the pre-arranged employment visa or 9D visa. And then the Department of Labor and Employment issues the Alien Employment Permit or the AEP. We also issue Certificate of Exclusion and the Certificate of Exemption. Next slide, please. So the, the next question will be, how do I get an Alien Employment Permit in the Philippines? So uh, the Alien uh, Employment Permit, the Certificate of Exclusion, and the Certificate of, of Exemption are actually applied in the regional offices of the Department of Labor and Employment Concern. So it's actually jurisdictional. Where, wherever the, the foreign national will be assigned, they, uh, the employer or the foreign national should apply for, that, for the AEP or the two other certificates in the, the regional office wherein they uh, the foreign national intends to work. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, just recently, or uh, Department Order Number 221 Series of 2021, uh, in actually amended DO, uh, DO186 Series of 2017, and it has, it was signed by the Secretary on January 6th of 2021, and it was published on the 20th of April. And it took effect on the 6th of 2021. So this is actually the, uh, the process flow we're in. Uh, we, uh, the process flow that we follow in the application of the new AEP and the or renewal of AEP, the application for certificate of exclusion and the application for certificate of exemption. First one for, uh, for the AEP before the foreign national or the employer uh, would uh, file their application, there has to be, or the uh, employer should uh, publish the, uh, the job vacancy in the company at least 15 calendar days prior to the application for AEP, okay? And then uh, the job vacancy being applied for by the foreign national should be 
uh, published in a newspaper of general circulation, uh, there are particular uh, details or important uh, details of uh, the position, like the position, uh, the name of the company that should be in the in the uh, the post in the posting of the job vacancy. It we do not requires uh, we do not require a specific uh, uh, size of uh, the publication as long as it is readable by uh, the readers. Next slide, please. Okay, these are actually the steps uh, in the application for new AEP. Number one, uh, employer post job vacancy in a newspaper of general circulation 15 days before the application. And then the employer or the foreign national submits the application and documentary requirements to the DO regional office concern. And then the DO regional office receives and conducts preliminary evaluation within two working days. But we, we, we should take note that uh, the, the DO regional office would only receive and accept the application if and when all the documentary requirements are complete. Because we do follow a process cycle time in the process of the And then step four, the DO regional office will publish your, the AEP application uh, and that's how actually we conduct the labor market test. And then step five, they will process, evaluate, and of course, verify if and when applicable. Verification uh, sometimes, uh, if there is a doubt in, on the part of uh, the regional office, let's say, for example, they are not sure that their, uh, their company actually exists or the foreign national is not uh, uh, is applying for uh, for a, a position that is not uh, existing at the company. So uh, there would be a verification to be conducted by the regional office. And then if and when there's no issue, there's no problem with the application, it would be approved and an AEP uh, would be issued, AEP card would be issued within five working days after the conduct of the labor market test or the publication. And if and when there are some issues or there are concerns uh, that, would be, uh, uh, that would merit the disapproval, a letter of denial or order of denial will be issued to the party concerned. Next slide, please, or the applicant. For the renewal of AEP, the employer or foreign national will submit the application and the documentary requirements for the new one. Of course, the old AEP card would be uh, would be uh, surrendered, or not actually the the the, the main uh, card, but a photocopy of the card would be. Uh, would be submitted for as part as part of the documentary requirements, and then the Dole regional office receives and evaluates the application within two working days, and then they would process the application, approve it or deny it, whatever the uh, whichever the case may be, and then they would issue the AEP card within three working days if approved, and if denied, they would issue an order of denial. Requirements for application of AEP or renewal. Of course, they have to uh, uh, submit the application which is uh, duly accomplished. And then the proof of publication shall be attached also with the application form. The expiring AEP card for renewal or a photocopy of the expiring AEP card for renewal. The photocopy of the passport's bio page with valid and appropriate visa. And then the taxpayer identification number or TIN. Uh, the appointment or contract of employment, uh, the business or mayor's permit, or if they are inside the eco zone or economic, uh, uh, economic zones, they would submit certificate of registration. Next slide, please. For construction companies, uh, one of the requirements also is the Philippine Construction Accreditation Board license or pickup license. A certificate of registration for contracting and subcontracting arrangements as well. For sole proprietorship, the certificate of business name registration together with the application form duly received by the DPR or the Department of Trade and Industry. For corporations, they have to submit certificate of registration, their articles of incorpor uh, incorporation and bylaws, and the general, uh, general information sheet which should be updated. For online gaming companies, we have also uh, we also require the license or certificate of accreditation or appointment 
from AGCOR or appropriate authorities. When we say appropriate authorities, there are some echo zones that also allow uh, online gaming uh, in their uh, particular zones. So if and when they are inside the echo zone, they would or they should submit uh, um, a uh, accreditation. I think it's accreditation and appointment issued by the echo zone authority. Next slide, please. Okay. Other applicable and relevant uh, permits or authorities, as I've mentioned uh, in, the, uh, in the previous slides, STP is uh, issued by PRC for practice of regulated profession. And then authority to employ alien is issued by the DOJ when the employer is covered by the anti dani law. And the authority to hire foreign national issued by the DNR is uh, up to being applied for and issued by uh, to an employer engaged in mining. For the applicable fees, uh, we uh, our fee for one year validity is ten thousand, and then for every additional year or or a fraction thereof is uh, would cost five thousand, and the publication fee, if applicable, would be four thousand. Uh, for the renewal, actually, we, we do not require a publication fee because for renewal, we do not conduct labor market test anymore. And then for the card replacement, due to loss, amendment, or additional position, a fee of 3000 shall be uh, paid or shall cost the foreign national. And then for the certificate of exclusion or exemption, uh, a, fee, a fee of 2000 pesos shall be paid by the applicant. Next slide, please. Here are some important notes that I, uh, I have to please tell everyone. So as I've mentioned earlier, proof of publication of the job vacancy in the newspaper of general circulation uh, should be accompanied by a duly notarized affidavit stating no applications were received, or even if there are actually applications received, no Filipino applicant was considered for the position. And then publication of vacancy for appointed or elective position is not required. So even if... Uh, uh, the foreign nationals position, uh, the foreign national would file for a new application. There are some instances that the labor market test will not be conducted. And these are actually for appointed or elective positions. And how do we know if it's appointed or elective position? Um, the foreign national or the employer should submit a duly certified board dissolution to the board secretary or its equivalent. And uh, if and when it is indicated in the company's articles of incorporation in GIS, they should just uh, provide a copy of, uh, uh, they should just uh, indicate that is actually indicated, uh, uh, that is actually contained in the company's articles of incorporation and GIS. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, foreign nationals previously issued with taxpayer identification number are not required to apply for a new one even if the team was issued for a different purpose, that is, for, uh, let's say, for purchase of real property. And then official receipt as proof of application for authorities and permits are conditionally accepted for processing of AEP applications. The original or certified two copy, however, should be submitted upon issuance. Because it takes a lot, it takes, I guess, some uh, three to four or to six months before the DOJ issues the in, uh, authority to employ alien. That's why for us to be able to issue the AEP on time, we, uh, we accept the proof of payment conditionally. Next slide, please. For the application, of, uh, application for certificate of exclusion, here are the steps. Uh, the company or the foreign national submits application for the certificate of exclusion. The DOE regional office accepts and evaluates the application. The process and conducts verification if applicable for disapproval and or approval. And then if no problems or no issues, the original office issues the certificate of exemption or order exemption. I guess it's exclusion. And then order uh, or order of denial within three working days from receipt of application. So all in all, when, we receive, when the, the original office receives uh, the documents completely, then they would issue the certificate of exclusion. And then these are actually the basic requirements. A letter addressed to the regional director concerned 
and then the business or mayor's permit or certificate of registration from the Ecozone Authority. And then the uh, photocopy of passports by uh, by a page with valid visa. Additional requirements for the certain categories of foreign national are, are also uh, has had to be submitted. Also, uh, the GIS or general information sheet indicating the position and the name of the foreign national and the secretary's certificate. For intracorporate transferees, uh, the foreign national or the sponsoring company should uh, submit the contract, excuse, or certificate of employment from the origin company or the mother company and the duly notarized secondment agreement. For CSS or contractual service supplier, they have to submit authenticated service contract of employment from the origin or mother company and then a service contract agreement between the Philippines-based company and the foreign company. Next slide. For categories of uh, foreign nationals who are representatives of accredited or registered foreign principal or employers in licensed recruitment or mining agency, Next slide, please. In the application for certificate of exemption, we also have four steps. And then first one would be company or foreign national submits uh, application and documentary requirements for certificate of exemption. The Doe Regional Office accepts and evaluates application. And then they will process and conduct verification if and when uh, applicable and then this approves or disapproves and after approval or disapproval a certificate of exemption or order of denial would be issued within three working days from the receipt of application next slide please who are the foreign nationals exempted from aet the 221 21-21 actually um uh uh, have additional categories of foreign nationals that we have exempted from AEP. Uh, number one, we have the de uh, dependent spouse of any member of the diplomatic corps. And then we have the accredited officials and personnel of international organizations and their dependent spouse. And number three, we have the officers, staff, and personnel working in embassies. And then number four, we have the officers and staff of peacekeeping or international organizations. Next slide, please. Also, a foreign nationals who come to the Philippines to teach, present, and or conduct research studies in universities and colleges as visiting exchange or adjunct professors are not required or exempted from securing an AEP. Similarly, uh, permanent president foreign nationals and probationary or temporary visa holders are also exempted. And uh, refugees and stateless person are also not required to secure an AEP and all other foreign nationals granted exemption by law. Next slide. Here are the requirements for uh, securing a certificate of exemption. We have the basic requirements like Letter number one is the letter addressed to the Dole Regional Director. And then, of course, the photocopy of the passport uh, bio page, except for stateless person. And then the photocopy of valid visa and the corresponding alien certificate of registration archive, if and when applicable. Next slide. Uh, for important notes or uh, things to remember, Certificate of exclusion shall be valid from the date of issuance until the end date of the contract, appointment, or election, while certificate of exemption shall be valid from the date of issuance to the end date of deployment. The AEP certificate of exemption or exclusion may be claimed or sent via courier service providers on the account of the applicants. Because of the pandemic, we already allow that the uh, courier service provided uh, be uh, be used by either our regional offices or our uh, clients 
in claiming their AEP certificate of exemption or exclusion. Next slide. On travel ban exemption requests and endorsement, all we need is the letter request addressed to the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment, but it has it should contain the reason for, for coming into the country and the per, I mean reason and the purpose for coming into the country and should be less than six months. The copy of valid passport or valid page. Uh, last two pages with the travel stamp and the next blank page, the company details and SEC registration. All those who would apply for an AEP uh, certificate of exclusion or exemption or who would be here for more than six months, uh, I mean, for uh, who would apply for an AEP are not required anymore to, uh, to request from the department uh, travel ban endorsement, travel ban endorsement to the DFA. Because they already they are already allowed to uh, to apply for a 90 visa even if they are not in the country. Next slide. Okay, these are actually the updates on travel ban exemption endorsement. IATF resolution number 131 series, 131A series of 2021, dated 05, August 2021. And then the Foreign Service Circular Number 2021-011. The Bureau of Immigration Operations Order Number JHM 2021-004. This actually provides uh, the steps and the procedure in applying for uh, for a 90 visa uh, when the foreign national is out, is not in the country. And then we have the Department of Justice guidelines pursuant to IATF uh, Resolution Number 131-A. On the part of the Department of Labor and Employment, we have already issued, and it was actually signed just today by the Secretary, uh, Labor Advisory Number 16. Um, this is actually issued where in the Philippines-based employer may already apply for an AAP on behalf of foreign national and who intends to come here for long-term employment. And uh, the requirement for a valid visa is currently relaxed based on the Labor Advisory and shall be complied with within 30 working days upon arrival and completion of the quarantine protocols. So um, even if the DO221 so provides that a valid a visa is required in the application of AEP, now uh, we have relaxed that particular uh, provision for the, for the foreign nationals who would be willing for, uh, who would be working for companies in the country to be able to, uh, to apply for AEP and their 90 visa. And I guess that will be the last part of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. And thank, thank everyone. you everyone. Thank you, Ms. Pineda. Um, and we hope you will stay on until the Q&A portion as there's a lot of questions for you from the audience submitted through the chat. No problem. Thank you. Our next presenters are Annalyn Kawinian and Lorenzo Miguel Timan from Kittelson and Carpo Consulting Inc. Annalyn is the Visa Services Manager of Kittelson and Carpo Consulting. She has over 12 years of experience in assisting foreign nationals on their visa applications and immigration related engagements with the Bureau of Immigration, Department of Labor and Employment, and other government agencies that regulate the entry and duration of stay of foreigners in the Philippines. She supervises a growing team of visa specialists and consultants in helping foreigners identify and acquire the proper type of visa they need to legally enter or stay in the Philippines. Her years of experience have equipped her with a wealth of knowledge in securing compliance with immigration requirements, identifying possible red flags, and developing contingency plans to ensure completion of visa application. She has handled volume engagements for both multinational companies and small and medium enterprises in multiple industries with a special focus in the industries of information technology, business process outsourcing, online gaming, construction and engineering, manufacturing and healthcare. Joining Annalyn is Lorenzo Miguel Timan, Visa Services Assistant Manager. MIGS ha has over four years experience in assisting foreign nationals and local and multinational companies with various Philippine visa applications, such as the 9G visa, 4782 visa, 13A visa, 
and special resident retiree visa, among others. He also has experience working and communicating with various government agencies, such as the Bureau of Immigration, Department of Labor and Employment, Department of Justice, Philippine Retirement Agency, and the Philippine Economic Zone Authority. I now turn it over to Annalyn and Vix. Hi everyone, thank you for the introduction Maan and thank you for inviting us for today's webinar. Hi everyone, we are from Kitalson and Carpo Consulting. We will discuss the process requirements, fees, and timeline of teenager work visa application of foreigners who is currently in the country and those who are outside the Philippines. First, I would like to discuss what the Niger work visa is. The Niger work visa is also known as the pre-arranged employee commercial visa, the most common type of work visa availed by foreigners who will be, sorry, who will be engaged uh, in gainful employment in the Philippines, meaning the foreign national must be involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the company and receives payment from employer to be qualified for a work visa. But not only foreign employees can apply for a work visa, but also the foreign owner of the local company through AEP exclusion. So what are the requirements for the Niger work visa application? First is the joint letter request. It must be signed by the applicant and the petitioner's authorized signatory. For the applicants who are outside the country, you will have to indicate to the letter which Philippine embassy where the order of approval will be forwarded and specific BI office where you will process the visa implementation and also the data capturing for the ACRI card. Passport copy. For those who are in the country, you need to attach the copy of passport bio page, latest arrival stamp and valid tourist visa. For those outside the Philippines, copy of pa passport bio page of the applicant will suffice. Duly accomplished consolidated general application form. It must be signed by the applicant and petitioner's authorized signatory. Notarized employment contract. It must be include the salary, position of the applicant, duration of employment, and job description. You may use the employment contract that you will be using for AEP application. Um, you also need to submit the corporate documents of the company. So complete copy of the SEC registration of the company that includes the articles of incorporation and bylaws, latest income tax return, business permit, and so on, and other required documents. I mean, I mean and other required corporate documents. Um, you also required to submit the AEP exclusion or AEP exemption certificate or AEP card. So this is the document that you need to secure from Department of Labor and Employment. Proof of publication, original newspaper clipping of the publication must be attached to the application. So you just have to take note that all documents signed abroad must be apostilled or authenticated. So what are the costs for the Niger work visa application? For one year new application, it is 10,130 pesos plus $50 for the ACRI card. Then for two years, it's AE, uh, for the two years, it's 17,170 pesos plus $100 for the ACRI card. For three years, it's 24,210 pesos plus $150 for the I card. For the renewal, it's a bit lower compared to the fees for new application. For one year, uh, renewal application, it is $7,060 plus $50 for the I card. And then for two years, it's $13,100 plus $100 for the I card. And for three years, it's $19,140 plus $150 for the I card. Work, you can apply um, in any Bureau of Immigration office. Immigration has BI satellite offices in provinces, so you may process it in any BI office nearest you. So how long is the processing time? It is 20 to 40 working days from submission of complete documentary requirements to the Bureau of Immigration.
what is the validity? It is coterminous with the employment contract and AEP card. So if the AEP card is valid for one year, then the 9G work visa will also be valid for one year. Okay. So what is the process? For applicant who is in the country, you will just have to submit the complete documentary requirements to the Bureau of Immigration Office. If everything is okay and immigration will not ask additional requirement, they will give you an order an order of payment slip so you can process the payment. Also, they will provide you a date as to when the applicant will be going to the Bureau of Immigration for data capturing. So after this, you will have to wait for the approval to be posted in the official website of the Bureau. If approved, you just need to submit a passport with valid tourist visa and wait for two to three weeks for the release of the ACRI card. For applicant who is outside the country, this will be the process. So submit the application uh, to the Bureau of Immigration with complete documentary requirements, and then pay the required fees for the application. Then assuming the application is already approved, the order of approval will be transmitted to the Department of Foreign Affairs via electronic means. Then the DFA will forward the order of approval to the foreign service post where the foreign national is situated. The foreign national will then have to submit the original passport to foreign service post to secure the implementation of the visa. Please note that the entry visa that will be um, given to the foreign national is valid only for 90 days. This is for entry purposes for, for entry purposes only. So once the 9G visa is issued, the foreign national may already enter the country. After the foreign national complete the quarantine period, he has to submit the passport to the Bureau of Immigration to implement the Niger work visa and also to process the uh, data capturing for the I-card. Then after this, wait for the ACR I-card to release. So once the ACR I-card is secured, the foreign national may now travel in and out of the country during the visa validity while working with the local company. Okay, so this is the end of my slide. Um, our assistant manager, Lorenzo Miguel Simon, will give you an overview of what Kittleson and Carpo does. Hi, Migs. Thank you, Ms. Annalyn. So Kittleson and Carpo Consulting is part of the InCorp group, and we provide various services um, in various countries in the region, such as Singapore, Hong Kong, Indonesia, um, China, India, Vietnam, Malaysia, and of course, the Philippines. Um, on top of immigration services, we also provide um, company formation, corporate compliance, product registration, tax incentives, recruitment services, con HR consulting services, and payroll assistance. So uh, in case you need um, ser those services, uh, we'll feel free to contact us and we'll be able to help. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for listening. And I hope you you guys learned um, something about the 9G visa process and we're free to answer your questions. Okay, thank you, Annalyn and Migs. Um, so now we go to the Q&A portion of the event. Um, I would like to call on Ms. Mele Charlotte, Managing Director of the French Chamber of Commerce and Industry in the Philippines for to moderate the Q&A. Thank you, Ma'an. Thank you very much. And thank you, dear speakers, for your very insightful presentation. So um, I'm, I'm delighted to meet you. And I received hundreds of questions. So I'm going to go uh, from the more usual case scenarios to the more maybe specific questions so that it's, it's summarizing everything, all right? Because we are not experts in this very specific topic. So. Firstly, uh, I think that the, as a Chamber of Commerce, the, the cases that we receive most often is a foreigner that is abroad who just got a, a contract to work in the Philippines and would like to come in the country, right? So in that case, maybe I'll ask first Ms. Pineda. So I think, I believe we have to secure first a 9A visa. This was not so mentioned during this presentation. So maybe you could give us again a few guidelines on this. And then could you remind us the few steps between the 9G and then the AEP? 
um, especially in regards with the latest mm. legislation that mentioned that we can now have a 9G visa process, even if we are abroad. So what does it mean and all that? Thank you. Back to you, Ms. Pineda. Okay. The difference between the 9E visa and the 9G visa is that you come to the Philippines on a 9E visa because you don't have any intention of working here. And you don't have any intention of, uh, you know, staying here more than six months, right? But for the 9G visa, you intend to work in the country of the Philippines-based employer. That's why you will be drawing your salary from here. And only the Department of Labor and Employment would be able to allow you to work in the country. Although AEP is not the only requirement for you to legally stay and work in the country, a 9G visa is actually required also. So before the pandemic, anyone, any foreign national can come to the country with a 9A visa and then they could convert it to 9G visa. But for now, based on the interagency task force on the, uh, for the management of emerging infectious diseases and also to, uh, you know, to prevent the, the spread of the virus, they have issued a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, IATF resolutions. And we follow what is uh, what is issued by the national uh, task force uh, uh, task task force agencies? Okay. So before the before the IATF one three one resolution was issued, we endorse foreign nationals who would come to the country even if uh, on a ninety visa. Okay, but after the one three one dash A was issued by the interagency task force, sometime. Uh, uh, actually, this is on August 5, 2021. 9A visa, uh, na, uh, foreign nationals who would come to the country for a short-term visit or even a short-term work okay, would be processed by DOLE for endorsement for travel ban exemption. But for those who would work here, who would signify that they would be working here and would apply for a 9G visa, they are already required to secure an AEP through their employer but we will not be endorsing them anymore. And that is also based on the DFA uh, issue once sometime in August also. And that actually took effect in August of 16, August 16 of 2021. So what they could do, apply for an AEP and then apply for a 9G visa. And once, uh, the, once the 9G visa is approved, that would be forwarded to the Philippine Consulate General's Office by the Bureau of Immigration, and then the PCG would stamp the visa. And once they come here, the Bureau of Immigration would be requiring them to appear so that the sticker, I guess that's a sticker visa, would be implemented by the Bureau of Immigration. But actually, it's after the completion of the quarantine protocols. So that's how it goes after the August 16th issuances of the 131 That's why all agencies uh, uh, engaged in the travel ban uh, exemption endorsements have already issued their when it comes to travel ban exemptions. So that's how it goes. All right. So Right now, uh, a foreigner that is abroad and have a short stay to go in the Philippines for a short work, like let's say an expert sent by a headquarter to go to the company, he would only uh, need a travel ban exemption, right? Yes. And he doesn't need to secure a 9A visa before anything else. Uh, the 9A visa will be issued by the PCG once approved by the DFA. All so right. let's say, for example, we, we have endorsed uh, the request to DFA and DFA approves the endorsement. Our DFA would send a letter to the Bureau of Immigration uh, stating that this person would be, allowed to, would be allowed to enter the country and the 9E visa will be uh, applied in the uh, Philippine Consulate General's Office from the country of origin, in the country of origin. So let's say, for example, he would be coming from Seoul, Korea. The PCG's uh, Korea would be stamping the 9A visa so that in the airport, he would not have any problems. In, in terms of timeline, uh, Ms. Pineda, what can we expect uh, for this process? I don't have, uh, I cannot say, or I cannot uh, 
give a particular timeline on this one because it sometimes depends on the availability of our uh, of the signatories or the senior officials. So it may take some time. And the DFA actually is already swamped with a lot of uh, uh, applications for a travel ban uh, endorsement, uh, TB endorsements. And so it would also depend on the DFA on how long or how short they would process the request. Thank you so much, Ms. Pineda. I'll, I'll ask also uh, Ms. Annalyn and Sir Lorenzo, who are also in the, the practice of uh, processing visa for everyone. So, um, Ms. Annalyn and Sir Lorenzo, so I mentioned um, one case scenario, which is, you know, foreigner abroad getting a new job. But we also have a lot of foreigners that has, uh, you know, equity in a company locally, like 40% uh, equity and uh, don't have any kind of visa, right? They just own some equity in a local corporation and they're stuck abroad. So what would be the process for them that you would advise? Um, if they are part of the owners of the company, they can secure the AEP exclusion through Department of Labor. Uh, I mean, in the Department of Labor and Employment through their uh, Philippine-based employer. And then once they have the um, AEP exclusion certificate, uh, they can apply for, I mean, a work visa uh, to the Bureau of Immigration. And then once they have the approved, um, um, I mean, if the application is approved, they can uh, secure an entry visa from the Philippine consulate in abroad. From your experience, how long did it take to process this, um, this AEP for this specific case? Um, based on the issue ones, it takes uh, 21 working days to process. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. I'll go to, um, you know, uh, the the 47A visa holder. So, um, you know, can a 47A2 visa holder as dependent work for a company here in the Philippines? Is there any need to, you know, apply for an AEP or a certificate of exemption? Okay, um, for the 47A2 visa, um, a prerequisite of that is proof of AEP application with DOLE. So that is a requirement. And once, um, once the 47A2 visa gets issued, he or she could work for that sponsoring company already. What about, um, you know, a foreign national who um, had a 90 visa in the past and it got expired because of everything that is, you know, happening when they were visiting, you know, family back home in Europe. So now that they can go back, what would be the process? And a follow-up question would be, is there any easy process, easier process for so people from ASEAN? To mm. what? Well, thanks to the new memorandum by immigration and other government agencies, expired 9G, v hold, 9G visa holders can now apply for 9G renewal because immigration also gave a grace period for those expired 9G visas until November 2021. So um, it depends on when the 9G visa expired. So they, all 9G, expired 9G visa holders have until November 2021 to file for the renewal, even though it is expired. And now since it could be filed abroad, um, then they have a chance to have their 9G visas renewed while waiting abroad. Ms. Pineda, do you want to add something? Yeah. Yes, um, I've, I've read a question here. His, uh, his visa expired in January. I guess this is from Mr. Daniel Moore. And he was, uh, it, the, the 9G visa expired while he was in Germany. Yes, he is allowed to renew his uh, AEP. So he could renew his 9G visa. Is he an, is, he is an AEP holder, right? Mr. Daniel Moore. If and when uh, a 9G visa has already expired and they have to renew AEP, that would be allowed. Um, uh, even if the foreign, the foreign national is in the country or out of the country. So conditionally, we would accept the renewal. If out of the country, the fees will be waived because it is uh, because uh, of course he cannot renew while while uh, while he's not around. So uh, once uh, the AEP is renewed, okay, 
uh, and then he was able to renew his 90 visa and uh, uh, through his uh, foreign employer, I mean, through his Philippines-based employer. Once he comes in, he would, we will just require the, the new uh, 90 visa, a photocopy of that, and then that's it, it's good to go. For foreign nationals who are uh, actually locked, uh, who were in a granular lockdown, we are giving them 30, I guess 30 days, to renew their application after the lifting of the quarantine. So let's say, for example, the foreign national is in Cebu. And then um, he was in a place that was uh, in a, uh, in a uh, ECQ or enhanced community quarantine. And then during the ECQ, his uh, AEP expires. Uh, we are giving them 30, uh, 30 calendar days after the lifting of the quarantine to renew their AEP without penalty. But if and when the, uh, the, the quarantine has already been lifted and 30 calendar days has lapsed and they were not able to, to, to renew it, then a penalty will be applied. So that's how, how we uh, treat uh, expired AEP and then they could apply for the non-G visa once, is, uh, once AEP is issued. Thank you, uh, Ms. Pineda, for this uh, information. Do you want to add anything, uh, Sir Lorenzo or uh, Ms. An Annaline, before I move to my next question? Oh, good. Okay. I I'll go a bit um, uh, with a wider question. So it's more for the, you know, uh, the married couples, right? Let's talk about that. So for um, foreigner married to local uh, citizen, local Filipino or Filipina with a 13A in process, um, can you tell us, tell us more what, what, what's the, you know, what would be the process for them? Like they don't have yet a 13A, so what do they need to do? And uh, also how long will it take um, this would be for married couples, and I'll ask even though if I know that it's very hard if you're not married, but is there any alternatives when you are partnered but not married to come in the country and you start abroad? So maybe back to you, Ms. Annalyn. Um, For married to a Philippine citizen, uh, they can travel uh, into the country uh, if, um, I mean, they can enter, they will allow to enter the Philippines provided that they will travel together with his or her Philippine spouse. And then they will provide or give them um, a balibak, uh, balikvayan visa valid for one year. And then if they will not uh, traveling to uh, together with, the, with their Philippine spouse, they need to secure an entry visa or 9A visa from the Philippine consulate abroad so, they got, so that they can enter the country. And then once they're here in the Philippines, they can apply for a certain A visa. Suppose if you're not married, how will, will we manage that? There is no um, current solution, is that right? Yeah, if there's no, uh, if they are not yet married to a Philippine citizen, then um, the, the only way for them to enter is to wait for the travel ban to be lifted because um, tourists, um, not married to a Philippine citizen is not yet allowed to enter the Philippines because we don't have fiancé visa here in the country. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so we need to know, be married. <laughs> okay, yes. we'll wait for the travel ban if it's hopefully, uh, hopefully. Like, Miss Pineda, would you be aware of any, you know, legislation on the way to boost the processes in terms of, um, getting a new visa or the renewal uh, period? And follow up question, if ever, any insights on the travel ban in general? Well, um, based on news reports, um, Congress has already been reviewing on the modernization of immigration on the Bureau of Immigration. Now we just have to wait for that to finalize and hopefully more visa options will be available for various foreign nationals depending on their circumstances. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let's keep our finger crossed, I guess, and see how it goes for the next few months. 
in I have one more question. So, um, you know, can a foreign nationals renew their 47A2 visa from a Philippine consulate from um, a country uh, of origin um, right now? Or can, um, what, what is bigger, yeah, the, the advice, you know, you as an individual abroad, What's the process mm -hmm. the local consulate, yeah. Filipino consulate? Yeah, yeah. Um, right now, um, the only approved visa that can be applied abroad is the 9G visa. But um, we are we are pos we are hopeful that this will include 47A2 visas as well. So it's only a matter of time uh, before immigration addresses that too. So, but right now, only 9G visas could be applied abroad. Uh, hello, if I may add. Sorry. Hello, yes. Who's this? <laughs> this is Wilmer from Dolly also. Okay, yes, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to what Lorenzo said, uh, the 47A2 uh, is already allowed to be issued in the uh, Philippine Post, but not the uh, 47A2 issued to PESA registered companies. Uh, the 47A2 visa that is allowed uh, now is the one for a foreign funded government projects. So uh, if there are uh, projects of the government that are coordinated with other um, countries and uh, that, that particular country will send um, some workers here in the Philippines, they will be issued a 4782 uh, visa specifically for foreign funded government projects. Thank you. Thank you so much. W would yeah. you have Yes. yes. So. It should be applied at the Department of uh, Justice for the 72. Which would have the, appointment. Yes. And and you know about um so yes, the the just to summarize because I, it, it seems it's not yet clear for everyone uh, since I'm receiving other questions. For the um, the timeline period. So if you want to get issued a new 9G and you are abroad, currently, can you give us an estimation so that the audience know what to expect? And then secondly, can you tell us an estimation when um, someone has already a 9G visa but is in the renewal period? So the first case, what would be the timeline to expect? Like, I don't have any visa, I'm abroad, I need to go to the Philippines and I wanna issue a 9G visa. What's the current practice timeline? I guess uh, the Bureau of Immigration has a maximum of 28 days. To the timeline. But if, our, if the alien employment permit is actually required for the 9G visa, uh, we only have seven working days for the process cycle time from the start of, let's say, uh, from the time that the application was already submitted with the complete documentary requirements. And that's exclusive of the 15-day 15 15 day, uh, publication required from the employers. So... In total, you have 15 calendar days for the publication and then seven working days for the AEP. Let's say that would be around uh, a total of uh, 30 calendar days and then 28 working days or a total of uh, more than a month. That's, let's say, one and uh, 45. So that would be a total of how long? 15 plus 45, I guess, 60 days within two months from the date that the, uh, the AEP has been approved? Uh, actually, the timeline will just be the same as That's for the you. timeline That's for you. when the foreign national is here because uh, the AEP will, um, will be processed in the same period, seven working days, and the 9G visa will also be processed within the same uh, working days of the Bureau of Immigration because it will still undergo the normal process. It will still be uh, um, approved by the Board of Commissioners. So the timeline for the issuance of uh, both cases of the 9G visa would, would be the same. 
Okay, so two months upon arrival. But although all the period, the preparation period when you're home to, to get to the Philippines and get the exemption can take much longer, right? Because from our experience, it, it took longer than this, right? Four to six months. So is that because of the travel ban exemption part? That's the one to take you off. All right, okay. Yes, I see that my friends from Northam are asking the audience if the requirements are crystal clear for everyone. Don't hesitate to say yes or no, because it, it's a tricky, you know, it, it's a tricky visa. It's hard for everyone, I think, even for uh, experts right here. So it's, uh, don't hesitate to ask them to clarify. And thank you so much for all your insights. I do have a few other questions, so I'll wait for the feedback of everyone. Maybe, Ms. Peneda, can I ask you to talk a bit more about the labor market test? Because it was very interesting. Can you tell okay. us? The labor market test actually is the conduct of, um, you know, for, for the department to be able to determine whether there's a Filipino who is competent, able, and willing to take the position of the foreign national where he is desired. Okay? So the labor market test is conducted through the publication of the application of AEP. If and when within 30 days, no Filipino would object to that particular publication or the application of the foreign national, then it's good to go. The foreign national may work. And... Uh, uh, in one series of 20 years, only require publication. But we have uh, encountered, especially in 2019, uh, we were asked by the Congress, particularly the House of the Representatives, and also, of course, the Senate, uh, particularly Senator William Neva, how many foreign nationals do we have in the Philippines working right now? So we would not be able to, to present the, the, you know, the full uh, details of or the full statistics of uh, the total number of foreign nationals working here because uh, Bureau, the Bureau of Immigration is actually issuing special work permit and they just renew and renew and renew. And um, in, uh, uh, upon recommendation of uh, one of the congressmen, uh, that we have to make sure that it's only the Department of Labor and Employment who would issue uh, the permit for the foreign nationals to work in the country, especially for a longer period of time. We added, uh, and then we were actually asked, uh, is our labor market test uh, effective enough for us to be able to know that there are actually no Filipinos who are competent, willing, and able to, to get the position. That's why in the in the latest uh, department order that we issued, there was already a requirement that the employer should post the job vacancy. So this is actually one of the tests also. If and when no Filipino would apply, then good. They just have to certify that no Filipino applied for that position. But if and when there's a Filipino who applied for uh, that position, then they'll just have to certify that this Filipino is not qualified to take the position. So preliminary to the labor market is conducted by the department is the posting of job vacancy of the employer who intends or which intends to hire. There is a position available in my company. Anyone could apply, whether Filipino or foreign national. But if no Filipino applies, then it's okay. A foreign, the foreign national can apply for that position. So that's how the labor market test goes. Just to, you know, just to implement what our constitution states that uh, we should uh, have uh, the uh, preferential uh, labor would be given to the Filipinos. Uh, and for us to be able also to, to hold back this, this uh, skilled Filipino workers going abroad. That's why we 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 had this uh we had this uh preliminary to the labor market test. And when it comes for a position that was filled by a foreign national, 
and then they just want to renew the contract because the person you know is already in the company so does it does is there a requirement to to post again the job uh, offer no for for the renew for uh, foreign nationals who would renew their aep the publication is not anymore required because basically there's no vacancy to be posted Oh, the company yeah. would want to hire him, yes. Ah, so yeah. he will just renew his AEP. But the company should ensure that the AEP would not expire or it should be uh, it should expiration to have enough time for them to be able to, you know, not to not to be imposed upon with penalties and also for the for the 90 visa uh, valid still at the time of the renewal so we advise them renew early as 60 days before the expiration i see okay thank you Ko. and so i have a few thank questions you. more <laughs> dear expert so for the um, you know, someone asked me if the foreign national is qualified to receive a 9G or a 90 or even a 47A2 visa because he is filling all the requirements. Would you have a recommendation on which visa type to prioritize? Oh, Miss Pineda, uh, I cannot hear you. Oh, yes. Hello. Uh, for the visa, you have the 47A2 and then. Uh, the nine nine and ninety. Yes, someone seems to be filling up just a single foreign national. Yeah, remember, is that is that possible for a foreign national to have three visas? Like, and, uh, I will um, have no, ask the help from, they my are, friend, from my colleague. Yeah. They are qualified for three visas, but they're asking if uh, what to prioritize. I guess, uh, it will depend on the um incentives of each visa because each visa has it has its own uh incentives especially for the 47a2 visa from the economic zone they are um exempted from certain uh, immigration certificates uh when they're going in and out of the country but the downside of that is it's only valid for one year so um, regardless of the visa type, it will depend on the employer and the foreign national to uh, decide on what uh, visa they will uh, take. But uh, all of it, all of that uh, visa types will require AEP if they will be working here in the country. Mm, I see. Um, I see. Okay, thank you. It's it's uh, it's it's clear for for the. Um... You know, um, what's the process in the case that the foreigner enters with a 9A for a shorter stay, found like the with an exemption that you mentioned, uh, and say then, you know, it's supposed to stay in less than six months, but after arrival, let's say there's a need to stay longer, right? So what's the process then to get the 9G visa? Is that is that all right? Um, they will get the the 9G visa uh, in a regular uh, circumstance since they're already here in the country. But for the uh, N3 of uh, the foreign national, they will undergo the travel ban exemptions uh, route because they, they've declared that they will come here for a short term uh, period. Yes. But upon arrival, and then they have the travel ban exemption, they stay six months. Suppose they want to do 9G now, it's okay, right? Yes, they can enter. Um, and then once the company decides that uh, his stay will be longer than six months, they have to secure the 9G. Mm. And then for the 9G dependents, you know, I, I did, we didn't mention it yet, but you know, you have this case where the, the spouse of the, they are both uh, foreign nationals. So does the 9G dependent, let's say the, the wife or the husband of the, the person who had the contract has to travel together or they to enter the Philippines now? Um, hello. Yes, Miss Annalyn. Yes, um, if they wanted to um, include their dependents and they wanted to 
bring their uh, dependents here in the Philippines, they can also include that in the Niger Work Visa application. Uh, they just need to provide the authenticated or apostille marriage contract for the dependent spouse and then uh, apostille um, birth certificate for uh, uh, children below 21 years of age. I see. And um, that, that, does it happen, you know, that the foreign national got um, denied in applying an NG visa? And yes, usually what are the, you know, the, the reasons out of the fact that it's missing documents? Well, usually the denial is because of the inconsistencies in the documents and information that the applicants will be, I mean, is submitted. I understand. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, going back to a few questions, I have a look, <laughs> but we have still uh, 15 minutes ahead. Ma'an, just let me know, huh? be our time uh, keeper. So <laughs> we, we, do we still, oh yes, Miss Pineda, you want to say something? Yes, can I just clarify on the questions prior to the uh, oh yes, question. please. Yeah, yeah. Let's. You please. said you said the foreign national came here with a mining visa, and then he or she was required more than six months. Is uh, and then he he or she wants to uh, change it to to I me mean, to apply for a ninety visa. Okay. Let's just be clear that if a foreign national comes in the country with a ninety visa, and then works. Uh, let's say, for example, he or she was issued an SWP for the short term uh, duration, yes, and sir. then uh, eventually will apply for a 90 visa. Before they could apply for a 90 visa, they should apply for the alien employment permit because the immigration would not issue the 90 visa without the AEP issued by the Department of Labor and Employment. Just to clarify, mm -hmm. uh, 90 visa cannot be cannot be. Uh, for this cannot be converted to 90 visa without the AEP. Okay. So we have to apply for the AEP. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's very clear. Thanks. There's a question because I heard this one a lot. Uh, you know, do we still need to downgrade 90 visa if the foreign national is presently abroad but will no longer work with the Philippine employer and change maybe like a well a job position to another company? How does it work for this kind of transition? Because, you know, sometimes. Yes, we, oh, yes no. Miss Anna, you can go yes, on. Yes, the process is that if they will, uh, if the contract will be ended, then they have to process the downgrading visa applications at the Bureau of Immigration. To, um, I mean, to to remove the liability of the uh, Philippine-based employer to the foreign national. Okay. Um, apparently, there's a lot of questions about grandparents. I need to know if it's uh, you referring, dear audience, to uh, grandparents that are foreign nationals or Filipinos, uh, but I guess nationals. So uh, can we get clarification on how we can get grandparents to Philippines to see their grandchildren? Uh, Yes, um, unfortunately for grandparents of, of foreign, foreign nationals, there's currently no visa option for them aside from the 9A visa. Um, but unfortunately, there's a travel ban, hence they couldn't travel in the Philippines. Yeah. So for now, the, the only option is to wait that the travel ban is lifted, basically. Or yes, like, unfortunately. Yeah, all right. Okay, thank you. Um, I, if I may add. Yes, please, sir. Yes. The travel ban exemption, um, many national government agencies uh, endorse also travel ban exemption uh, depending on their mandate. So uh, if they could, if, they, if a certain um, family could find a national government agency that, that can endorse their request to the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, they could. But for um, DOLE, we only uh, endorse uh, PDE requests for those who will be working here in the country. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah, that's that's very tricky sometimes. Kathy, you have mm. to apply to uh, a specific agency. And then the requirements sometimes are, di are different for the endorsement letters and then to get it to the DFA, that's true. 
the, the one that is also frequent for us and often the case, it, you know, investor visa, so the 90 visa, um, and it has expired. Can you tell us more, you know, about investor visa right now? What happens when they get expired? What is it about also? And, uh, and you know, do they have still an option to get 9A and then 9D uh, or 9G? More insights about the investor visa. Please. Uh, for investors visa, they can renew their card uh, even while they are outside the Philippines. So they just need to provide the complete documentary requirements for that. Oh, they can, right? Yes. Okay, so they just need to uh, give some requirements and renew it from abroad. Like the, okay. Yes. yes. Okay, that's good to know. Um, how about volunteer workers, you know, those who come to support uh, local NGOs, we, we, we do have a lot of people um, that are in NGOs and institutions and um, don't have salary usually. So. Yeah, um, they are not yet covered by the new issue one. So in order for them to apply, they need to secure um, a travel ban, ex I mean, um, a travel ban exemption through the um, any local government agency. So they need to secure an endorsement letter first from any local, any national government agency so that they can uh, secure a travel ban exemption. So they must be in the Philippines when they apply or secure an NG non-commercial visa in the country. But Biba, uh, we have to ask uh, the, the foreign uh, embassy that is in the Philippines for an endorsement letter first. Um, the endorsement letter should be coming from the national government unit. Yes, yeah. of the foreign national. Yes. So let's say I'm French and want to be uh, a volunteer in the Philippines. So I need to ask support from my French embassy in the Philippines to get endorsed for a, um, a letter of exemption. Uh, the endorsement letter must be coming from the Philippine uh, government national and uh, national government unit. So it's either in the Department of Interior and Local Government, the Bar Department of Health, yeah, uh, Department of Labor and Employment. So there. So if it is if it is coming from the embassy, no, uh, they won't probably they won't uh, accept that for travel ban exemption application. Okay. I suggest that anyway, all those questions that we have here, we can somehow prepare some summary and we'll ask you, the experts, if that sounds nice for our audience. Um, since I have uh, five minutes left, one last question also, you know, the special retirement visas. Um, because it was okay, then it was, you know, a bit uh, stopped for a while. So can you give us some, um, you know, updates on the retirement visas? Um, are they allowed to go in the country? Do, do we issue more? Yeah, for the retirement visa application, they will allow, uh, I mean, um, well, the requirements of the PRA is the, the applicant must be in the country. They can request a travel ban exemption to the Philippine Retirement Authority. Uh, yeah, and it must be, and, and it will be endorsed but to the uh, Department of Tourism and Department of Foreign Affairs for final approval. Okay. So, but they need to provide the complete documentary requirements for the SRRV application so that they can request for the travel ban exemption document from the Philippine Retirement Authority. All right. Okay. Including the deposit, the required deposit, which is at least 20,000 US dollars. Um, thank you so much here. In terms of age, what's the youngest age, you know, currently being accepted for this? Um, has it been reduced lower than 50 years or not? Uh, the required um, age, I mean, the age requirement for the retirement visa application is at least 50 years old. For the retirement. Yes. Okay. okay, very clear. Cool. Support on AEP if the PRA allows it. I'll wait for the next question. I think we are good to go. Um, maybe back to you, Maan, or do I still have time maybe to take a question or two? 
Um, I think you have one, you have time for one more question. Oh, Sige, thank you po. All right. Hello. The last questions and then, uh, yes, I can ask it. Uh, can a travel ban exemption and an AEP be applied at the same time from Dolly? AB and AEP applied at the same uh, time? No, ma'am. No, uh, the, the employer should already apply for the AEP and then apply for the 90 visa once issued and then they could come in without the travel ban exemption because mm -hmm. DFA would only disapprove it or will demand it. Mm, I see. Okay, it's more clear. Um, and then someone is looking for the possibility to work from the Philippines as a freelancer for a uh, US online platform. Um, how would it work, you know, um, if uh, there is no really like employment locally involved? Is that, can you tell us more about this kind of cases, you know, which are really quite common for, you know, all the digital nomads and all that? You know, People who are under, um, I think so it will mean that they are under tourist visa, right? Is there any case when that uh, the contract of employment is from a foreign companies from a, outside the Philippines and then the person is working here in the Philippines? How to legalize that? The foreign company is outside of Country. Yes, but so, he would come here to work. He would come here to work. Let's say the person was here in the Philippines, like working. Tapos he lost his job. Let's say something like that, and then he found a new job online with a company. But the company is not even in the Philippines, but it's work from home set up. So, you know, you can be under uh, since he's already in is the he a foreign uh, national or is he a Philippine foreign national? Foreign national. Oh, oh. Okay, the foreign national is in the country, but he works uh, for a uh, just like a work from home setup, right? And the and the employee is outside the country. Yeah. Oh, he's he. I guess he would not. Um, since uh, one of the one of the basic requirements for for you know the AEP, the salary should be drawn in the country. That's why he or she will be taxed. But if uh, but if the foreign national will work uh, for a foreign company which is outside the country, I guess what's the why why would he be here if if he doesn't have a ninety visa? Well, let's, or what is? Let's say you know he's been here for many years in the past. Suppose his life is in the Philippines. Let let's say there's not. But there should be a visa. He should be a holder of a visa to legally stay in the country. So, Miss Pineda, uh, I think I, the tourist visa can be renewed currently right now. Yes, ma'am. So, yes. if and when he has a valid, he or she has a valid tourist visa and working for a company outside the Philippines, I don't see any problem with that as long as he has a valid visa. Okay. Because we only apply for AEP if and when the employer is uh, based in the Philippines. All right. So as long as uh, as the person is okay with the tourist visa right now and renew it. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, ma'am. I think we are out of time. Thank you very much, uh, dear speakers, Ms. Pineda, Ms. Annalyn, Sir Lorenzo. It was really great to hear from you. Very insightful. Uh, I, I thank you, dear audience, for your questions. I tried to ask all of them, but uh, let let us know. We'll we'll give you the presentation of the speakers and uh, and the contact, and you let us know if you have further questions. We try as much as possible with uh, with North Time and the other chambers to assist you. Thank you, and back to you, man. Thank you, Melis, and thank you to all our speakers. May I request um, just a few seconds? Um, so we can take a picture of all the speakers with Melis. Yes, yeah, sure. It's my favorite picture time. <laughs> we'll say it. Let's go. Wait, hold on. Let me put on the spotlight again. 
so that I have you all on the screen. Wait. Okay, wait, hold on. Ah, there it is. Okay. Wait, hold on, give me a few seconds, sorry. Um, for the audience, um, we have all the questions that you sent in. We'll try to send them again to our speakers so that they can uh, um, help answer them. Um, I hope that they will, and we will send you the, the replies on those questions. I am missing, okay, hold on. Okay. Um, I'm missing Miguel, Mix, where are you? Okay, there you go. Okay, I got you all. Okay, one, two, three, smile. Okay, that's it, thank you. And thank you everyone. Thank you our, to our speakers and to our partners, um, to our participants. Thank you for being here and we really appreciate you attending this event. And thank you again for joining us and we will see you next time. Thank you, Bo. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Melis.